Hi everyone, welcome to episode 10. So the first thing we're going to be looking at today is variable jump height. Now currently you press the jump button, your character leaps off the ground with maximum jump force and reaches the specified max jump height. Now we want to introduce a new minimum jump height and calculate the jump force required to reach that minimum jump height. And then what will happen is if you release the jump button early, in other words before you reach the maximum jump height, then the character's upward velocity will be set equal to the minimum jump force, such that wherever the character currently is in the jump, it will only travel a further minimum jump height upwards. So what we know is our value for gravity, and we can set minimum jump height to whatever we want it to be, um, and we're trying to solve for the minimum jump force. Now, there's a kinematic equation which suits our needs perfectly. It goes final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. So uh, we can get rid of uh, initial velocity since that is just zero in our case. And we can translate this to minimum jump force is equal to the square root of 2 times gravity times min jump height. So gravity is acting as our acceleration and we're using the absolute value, in other words, not the negative value of gravity. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this. I'm gonna go into my player script and I'm going to rename jump height, just with command R, to uh, max jump height. And I'm gonna create a new public float called min jump height, set that equal to one by default. And uh, let's see, where do I have jump velocity over here? I'll rename this to max jump velocity and I'll create a new float min jump velocity. All right, so over here in the start method where we're calculating max jump velocity, let's set min jump velocity equal to, um, how did our equation go? It was square root of 2 multiplied by the absolute value of gravity multiplied by the minimum jump height. All right. Okay, so let's go down to where we've got our jump input. And uh, we want to say if the jump button is released, so if input dot get key up, um, we're using key code dot space for jumping. If it's released, we want to set velocity dot y equal to our minimum jump velocity. Now, um, of course, it could be the case that velocity is currently less than the minimum jump velocity. Um, and we obviously don't want to accelerate uh, while we're in the middle of the air, um, particularly if we we're like falling down already. So we'll first do a check, say if velocity dot y is greater than the minimum jump velocity, only then will we set it to the minimum jump velocity. All right, let's try this out. So holding down the spacebar, I get this nice high jump. If I just tap it as quickly as I can, I get a much lower jump. And of course, I can uh, get anywhere in between those two extremes by releasing it earlier or later. Okay, cool, so that's working very nicely. Um, the next thing that we want to look at is jumping up through a platform and uh, also falling down through a platform if we want to. Now, uh, presumably you're going to want to be able to specify certain platforms which can actually be jumped through or fallen through as the case may be. So let us create a new tag and uh, I don't really know what to call this tag, but let me call it through for now, just to indicate that you can move through this platform. And uh, let me create just a nice little platform to test this out on. Um, I'll apply the through tag to this, and I'm gonna open up the controller 2D script, um, since this is of course where all our collisions are taking place. And let's find the vertical collisions method and over here, we're saying if hit, and uh, if you remember, this is where we actually constrain the velocity so that we don't move through things. And we wanna say, if hit.collider.tag is equal to this through tag, then we in fact do want to move through. 
if the direction is equal to 1, in other words, we're moving up. So if that is the case, we're just going to say continue. In other words, skip all of this and go to the next ray in the loop. So already, this should be working. Um, if we just jump, you can see we can go right through this platform. Um, now, one fiddly little thing is if I position this just at the right height, um, okay, a little bit lower, you can see there. Um, let me demonstrate again. We jump, we don't quite make it, but um, it sort of slides through anyway. And this is because the hit distance of the vertical rays is equal to zero. And so it's um, giving us a velocity of skin width. Um, we don't want that to happen. So we're going to say if direction is equal to one or hit dot distance is equal to zero, then skip ahead. All right, so that shouldn't happen anymore. Um, and the next thing we want to do is falling through platforms. Okay, so the way that I envisage this working is quite simply that if you press down while standing on a platform with a through tag applied, you'll fall through it. Now, currently the controller 2D class does not have access to the player's input. So let's go up to the move method and add in another parameter, a vector to input. Um, keep in mind now that this method is also being called from the moving platform class, and it's a bit irritating to have to specify an input when we're calling it from the moving platform class, since it's obviously just going to be zero. So we're just going to create a little overload method here, public void move, uh, takes in vector three velocity, takes in bool standing, oops, standing on platform but no input, and all this does is uh, just makes a call to the actual move method. We pass in velocity, we automatically set uh, input to vector2.0, and we pass in our standing on platform value. Okay, so that just means that the moving platform class doesn't have to worry about that. Um, we now want to create a vector2 called player input, to actually store our input in. And in the move method, we'll say player input is equal to input. So what we can now do is go into the vertical collisions and add another case if player input uh, dot y is equal to negative one, then we want to fall through, so continue. Okay, we just need to go into the player class and add our input to the controller.move call. And this should now work. Let's try it out. Hop. And I'll press down and I fall through it. Okay, so that's great. Um, what won't work so well is if I use a moving platform to test this out. Um, let me apply the through tag and I'm just gonna remove the last waypoint. Um, Let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see. Absolutely <laughs> not what we want. So let's go into the platform controller script. And we basically want to not let it have any influence on the player while it's moving through the platform. So uh, we want to find all the places where we are detecting collisions. That's all the places where we say if hit. And we want to say that if the hit distance is equal to zero, in other words, the, the player is actually inside of the platform, then we don't want to run this uh, collision code. So we can say if hit and hit dot distance is not equal to zero. So let's just uh, copy that for the other two cases. All right, paste it, save and we should be making some good progress. You can see that now we can jump through the platform and uh, we can even fall through it. But uh, the falling through is not particularly reliable. Um, if I just press the button very quickly, you can see we don't actually fall through. I really have to hold it down. Um, and the reason for that is just that um, we're not falling through quickly enough and the platform is sort of catching us. Um, so what we want to do 
is to go into the controller 2D script and uh, we want to make it so that once we've pressed down, um, even if we release the down button, it continues to treat it as if it is down uh, for say half a second afterwards. So we are going to go into our collision info struct and we're going to make a, a public bool falling through platform. All right. And as soon as we receive input to fall through the platform, we're going to set that to true. So collisions dot falling through platform is true. And uh, before this if statement, we'll have another one saying if collisions dot falling through platform, then uh, we also want to continue. Now we need a way to actually reset this variable after about half a second. So let's create a method, um, just to avoid, we can just really call it reset, uh, reset falling through platform. And all this does is it says collisions dot falling through platform is false. So uh, over here where we've set it equal to true, we're going to invoke this method so in quotation marks, we give the method name, which was reset falling through platform. And we pass in a time, so I'll give it half a second. So after, after half a second, this method will be called. Um, that should help. Now also in the player class, we want to grab this bit of code where the velocity on the y-axis is being reset if there's a collision above or below our character. And uh, we want to move it all the way down to just below the place where we actually call controller.move. And the reason I'm doing this is simply because if we're on a moving platform, um, the moving platform is also calling controller.move, which is potentially altering these uh, above and below values. So we want to make sure that we have the values that are present um, after we've called the controller move with our own input. All right, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, let's give this another try. We can jump through and we can also fall through reliably now. All right, that's everything for this episode. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything in particular that you would like to see next. Cheers.